following program is classified MA. It is not recommended for those under the age of 15 and may contain coarse language, sex scenes, violence and adult themes. Tonight on Most Shocking. Through another intersection here. A female car thief tears up Tinseltown. Up on the curb. And I think that car got scraped. Leaving a trail of destruction in her wake. Oh, look at that. Plus. I'm going to tell you one more time. Put your phone up. A belligerent woman thinks she can ignore an officer. Stop. Don't touch me. But she's in for a surprise. A strung out blonde goes berserk in the back of a cruiser. Wow. But first, a naked crackhead steals a police car, slamming into cops in a reckless rampage. Later, a legendary bank robber holds up in her motorhome. Lay right down, get your hands behind your back. Triggering a deadly standoff. It's not a movie. Holy God! Everything you're about to see is real. Brace yourself. Get out! This is Most Shocking Lawless Ladies. Burlington, North Carolina. The cruiser with the open trunk belongs to Corporal Jay Snow. But he's not behind the wheel. Moments ago, the officer responded to a report of a naked woman in distress. She runs to the police car. So initially, I'm thinking this is a victim of some type of sex crime. She gets in the back of the police car and curls up in a fetal position. But when the corporal goes to his trunk to get a blanket, the woman climbs up front and takes off. Joy Lynn Tedesco leads police on a winding chase through town. She's on web now, making a left on camera. It's a dangerous situation. You got somebody that's a possible mental patient racing away in a $25,000 police car with a shotgun inside the car and all that. Patrolman Doug Robertson quickly takes the lead in the chase. As she crossed my path when I was on Mevin Street, she crossed over, and I turned behind her and activated my emergency equipment, which are lights and sirens. It looks like officers may get a lucky break. Driver, turn off your vehicle and throw your keys out. But the feeling is short-lived. Communication to the 10:50. I thought she was leaving, but she put it back in reverse. And she rammed into me a second time. I think she's trying to deploy my airbags. She leaves the patrolman in a cloud of smoke. Okay, she's still going, Queen okay? But other officers move in fast. The naked fugitive races aimlessly through quiet neighborhoods. But she takes one turn too many. Right into a dead end. Officers rush the stolen cruiser. Okay, she's running. The suspect is nowhere to be found. Cops spread out and search the property. She's apprehended moments later. One officer was able to grab her and get her down on the ground, at which time I came along and was able to grab her other arm. And we placed her arm behind her back and uh, put handcuffs on her. It turns out the woman is high on crack cocaine. She now faces multiple charges, including assault on a police officer. As for Corporal Snow, he's just happy to have his cruiser back. When she was apprehended, I was very relieved. 
especially since no one got hurt. Corporal Snow did get a little ribbing on it, but that's, that's gonna happen. It all turned out good. We do those things because we care about each other. Thanks to officers' dogged persistence, <laughs> this criminal is trading in her birthday suit for a prison issue jumpsuit. Boynton Beach, Florida. Police have pulled over a woman for speeding, but she won't stop smoking. Put your cigarette out, step out of the vehicle for me. Or stop talking. Put your phone down. No, I'm calling somebody. I'm gonna tell you one more time. Put your phone down. She continues her phone call. Fox, the police pulled me over. So the officer calls her bluff. And he's telling me that he's gonna arrest me. She's busted. He's arresting me. Stop, don't touch me. But the unruly driver doesn't get the message. Get out of the car now. The cop pulls out his taser gun. No, don't touch me. The policeman, you want to shoot me? He's got a gun and he's going to shoot me. Get out of the car now. Or I'm going to tase you. Get out of the car now or I'm going to tase you. I'm going to tell you one more time. Tase me? I'm going to tell you one more time. Get out of the car. A final warning is issued. I won't get out of the car or I'm going to tase you. The next street off the secret. She's listening now. It takes 50,000 volts for her to obey. When she recovers from the shock, the officers take her into custody. It should have been a routine traffic ticket. Instead, it will be her most costly phone bill ever. <laughs> Upper Arlington, Ohio. Why did you do that to me? A stoned-out woman is locked in the back of a cruiser after attacking a young girl. I did nothing to you! In a drug-induced meltdown, she painfully contorts herself to bring her shackled hands to the front. Ah! Ah! No right to then she bangs away at the glass, pleading with officers to set her free. The cops ignore her shrieking. No! Please don't let me go with him, please! As they secure the crime scene. No! No! Please don't let me go with him. No, no, please. Please don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. Please hurt me. So the suspect tries to make a break for it. Please let me go. She yanks the partition glass. Please let me go. But it won't budge. Next, she goes after a side window. She's convinced there's a way out of this jam. Come on! That's when she sees her radar antenna mounted in the rear window. Yellow bitch! And tears it from its anchor. It's the perfect projectile for busting out of this joint. Swinging it by its cord, she repeatedly pounds the glass. And finally strikes Pater. Officer readies his mace and moves in. 
The troublemaker is yanked out of the back seat and re-secured on the ground. But even that doesn't put an end to her agitated antics. Medical personnel arrive to treat the woman's chemical high before she's charged with felony vandalism. Hopefully the same determination she used to break out of this squad car can be used to break her drug habits. Mother and daughter running drugs spark a blistering high-speed pursuit. But their luck runs out in a crowded parking lot. Plus, Stay down and get your hands behind your back. An elderly female bank robber makes a last stand in her RV. Go, go, go! And a knife-wielding young woman attacks a defenseless clerk. Most Chuckin' Lawless Ladies. <laughs> Spanish Fork, Utah. I'm northbound, dark green and colored Triple Eight Cavalier, four-door, two female officers. Trooper Sterling Clark chases down two women fleeing at over 100 miles an hour. The suspects both have prior records for drug possession, transporting. It looks like the driver, Karen Hungate, and her daughter, Melissa, are up to their old tricks. The mom barrels through a construction zone. But Trooper Clark sticks close behind. She's tapping her brakes at me. He pulls alongside and spots the daughter in hysterics. She stuck her fingers out the window and was yelling, help. Help me, help me. This may be a one-woman show. And it's about to get a lot more dangerous. They're going to get traffic northbound all the way. She hits triple digits, blasting into oncoming traffic. <laughs> Trooper Clark is forced to hang back. I thought if I terminate, then she might go back south. So I just stayed behind her just to see if she was going to turn around and go back south again. <laughs> the tactic works. The woman drives onto the right side of traffic where deputies are waiting with spike strips. Okay, that one, I think, took the front right tire. But the mad mother's will to escape okay, is still intact. We're exiting 257. We're taking 257. <laughs> to Trooper Clark's horror, she speeds into a packed parking lot. She started heading in the, to the front of the grocery store where all the people are going in at the main entrance of the store. The daughter sees her chance and bails out. Passenger got dropped off. There's one person in the car now. But mom still has no intention of stopping. She takes another lap around the parking lot. It will be her last. Clark and others surround the car, but she refuses to give up. We had no choice but to start breaking windows. Another deputy fires a taser. And finally, Karen Hungate is in custody. 
it's no wonder why she ran. When we searched the vehicle, we found heroin, cocaine, and meth. The daughter may have been an unwilling passenger, but she's not free of guilt. They were charged with 72 counts of reckless endangerment and possession, uh, intent to distribute, uh, suspended license, and DUI. It will be a while before this mother-daughter duo is allowed to roam free. And considering the damage they did when they were, Utah police can rest easy. Melbourne, Australia. Grocery store owner Maggotty Soliman frequently works the register in his IGA franchise. Tonight, a woman half his size will make him pay for that decision. She leaps the counter, swinging a knife at the stunned clerk. She stabbed me twice in my arm, two times. I felt like blood coming, my arm getting warm. Soliman desperately grabs the thief's hand. Though it looks like a mismatch, the woman has an internal advantage. She was stronger than me in that time because she has drugs. Soliman notices the blood and pushes the alarm. All he can do is hang on for dear life against the coked out crook. If I couldn't control her, she might kill me. She asked me, give me the money, leave me alone, I leave the store now. And I told her, no way, no way. Because I believe that even if I give her the money, she will kill me. After 11 agonizing minutes of struggle, police arrive. In all his years as a store operator, he never thought he'd face a felon like this. Always we expect something bad from boys, not from girls. It was good help from God. It's a miracle. It's a new life for me. Tyler, Texas. Police and FBI surround an RV. Inside is the notorious bank robber known as Cowboy Bob. Cowboy Bob was a nickname given to this robber in the 1990s by special agents in Dallas because the robber looked like a cowboy. A head to toe was cowboy hat, cowboy coats, sunglasses, and a wig. But hiding under the 10-gallon hat is 60-year-old Peggy Jo Tallis. She just held up a local bank, then fled the scene in her motorhome. Cowboy Bob rides again into our town. She had no connections to Tyler that we could tell whatsoever, uh, but she sure liked to come here to rob banks. The gunslinging grandma refuses to surrender. With a 357 in hand, she threatens to open fire. She's refusing to come out. They are pleading with her, put the gun down, come on out, we can work this out. But for this desperado, there's no turning back. Watch again. Peggy Jo aims her weapon for a final showdown. The officers at the scene had no choice whatsoever but to fire. This is what is generally called suicide by cop. She made the decision for them to end her life. Officers toss in a flash grenade then storm inside, searching for additional suspects. But all that's left is the legend of Cowboy Bob. There was approximately a dozen hats throughout the vehicle, along with wigs and gloves. For Peggy Joe Tallis, 
Old habits die hard. I've never seen a bank robbery quite like this one in my career. You cannot make this one up. Uh, it is true that truth is stranger than fiction. Spree tries swimming to freedom. Plus, a crook sticks up a car dealership, nearly ending a clerk's lease on life. Then, have you been drinking tonight? I had a glass of wine. A mild-mannered drunk shows off her dark side. Wait, 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 wait! I need to have a right to call a phone. When most shocking, lawless ladies return. Fort Worth, Texas. Look at this. This is crazy. Police pursue a woman in a stolen pickup truck. And with traffic increasing, cops aren't about to sit back and wait for her to make a mistake. Up ahead, officers lay down tire-shredding spike strips. She rolls right over them. A plume of smoke streams from the rapidly deflating tire. Holy cow! Running on rims, the truck slows. Then, with the vehicle still moving, the driver jumps out. Can't believe this is still going on! She hops a concrete barrier, then runs down the banks of Lake Ray Hubbard. It looks like she's gonna try and swim for it. But officers swarm in fast, and before long... Get out! This larcenous lady is in custody. She's got more to answer for than just the stolen pickup. The woman is in possession of multiple stolen items, including the shoes on her feet. She ran in a stolen truck, and then she ran on stolen stilettos. But in reality, the only thing she was running on was borrowed time. Molino, Florida. An officer follows as a woman flips between her left and right turn signals, but continues to drive straight. Add to that her swerving between lanes, and it's time to take her off the road. Hello? What seems to be the problem? I don't know. But the officer is pretty sure that he knows. Mr. Reynolds, can I get you to step back here for just a second? Just come on back over here. On wobbly legs, she complies. Mr. Reynolds, I'm concerned for your safety right now, and I'd like for you to do some field sobriety exercises for me. Would you be able to do those? Sure. Okay. Well, my light side the officer side runs side. a battery of sobriety tests. I want you to stay focused on my pen for me, okay? Mr. Rogers, you can come back over here to this line. Don't start till I tell you to. 1,007, 1,008, 1,009. Don't start till I tell you to. Ms. Reynolds, you can stop. That's good. She fails every one of them. All right. Mr. Rogers, if I can get you to place your hands behind your back for me at this time, I am going to be placing you under arrest for driving under the influence. Ms. Reynolds. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Suddenly, this soft-spoken suspect becomes much less agreeable. You're, you're doing something that's illegal. What, what is that? You're putting me in handcuffs, and I am freaking out because my boss has a right to be notified. Right. No, don't touch me. No, I need to have a right to call a phone. No. On the way downtown, she shows her true colors. You are going to be sued. Oh. I am going to freak out. I will call you, and I will have you sued. Now get me out of here! I am not the person. You, I think you are such a. This woman had no business being on the road. In fact, she had trouble just being on her feet. Now she can cool her heels in jail. No, I need to have a right to call a phone. 
Detroit, Michigan. A discount clothing store is a great way to flesh out your wardrobe without breaking the bank. But a team of women in this outlet doesn't just want a bargain. They want a steal. The leader in the purple do-rag has brought quite a collection of purchases to the register. It's enough to keep the cashier busy for some time. The accomplice in the white hat lurks in the back aisles. While the lady in the yellow shirt lingers near the front as a lookout. There's also a fourth woman in on the act, quietly loading clothes into a garbage bag. With cash in hand, the leader is ready to complete her transaction. But then she hears the total price, and she's outraged. She puts her money away and tells her friends she's ready to leave. Yellow Shirt abandons some tops on a table, but she doesn't exit. She was just making sure the escape route is clear. The signal is about to be given. But then, a snag. Several shoppers enter, barring the way for a quick retreat. The thieves are getting antsy. The woman with the garbage bag doesn't want to wait any longer. The second the path is open, she bolts for the door. The others make their move. As the struggle erupts at the counter, Yellow Shirt takes off. White Hat comes back for her friend, who has her hands full with the feisty clerk. She finally pulls free and makes off with an armful of stolen loot. But her success is short-lived. Authorities already know one of the women well. After watching this video, they extend an offer. They'll lessen the charges if she turns herself in, which could be the best bargain she'll get all day. No fury like a woman scorned, especially one behind the wheel of an SUV. Plus, a sneak attack in Taiwan's parliament knocks a legislator out cold. Then, a female felon goes ballistic on the streets of L.A. Oh, look at that. On Most Shocking, Lawless Ladies. Boiling Spring Lakes, North Carolina. Officer Gene Daly is in pursuit of a dueling couple playing a dangerous game of chicken. Pull the vehicle over. There was a domestic disturbance with a male and female in different vehicles that were trying to run each other off the road. The boyfriend pulls over, but his jilted Jezebel stays on the run. Daily radios for spike strips to be laid out up ahead. But the hard charging suspect is hell bent on getting away. Once the spike strips were set out and she tried to run over the officer, it became a whole different situation where she was disregarding any human life whatsoever. The driver smashes into Daly's cruiser. The desperate outlaw is gunning for disaster. My worst fear during this chase was that she was going to kill somebody, especially at that time during the day when children were getting out of school, that she was going to kill a car full of children. Pull the car over. Pull the vehicle over. You're making it worse on yourself. Daly attempts a moving roadblock, 
but the girlfriend escapes the trap. We needed to get her off the road. I would say the suspect was definitely out of control. The felonious female continues her reign of road terror. I felt that this chase reached a new level. The driver accelerated. We were reaching speeds over 100 miles an hour. The suspect rages on and narrowly escapes another blowout. But Daly is not so lucky. When my vehicle hit the second set of spike strips, I had to discontinue my pursuit and let the sheriff's department take over at that time. Moments later, his adversary meets a bitter end. She slams a cruiser and flips her vehicle. Her exploits earn her time behind bars and the dubious title, Girlfriend Gone Wild. Taipei, Taiwan. <laughs> Chaos in the county council. An enraged politician attacks a hated rival. Other delegates quickly move in to pull her off. But the irate woman grabs whatever she can find and hurls it. The politician she pounded is overcome and falls to the floor. The fighting femme breaks free and charges back in. She tries to get in a few more kicks. But is finally taken away. As for the target of her fury, she suffers some minor scrapes and is extremely shaken. But she survives. It's not often that this legislative body sees eye to eye. But when they faced an attack on one of their own, they came together to stop this uncivil official from having any political clout. Huntington Beach, California. A ponytailed woman enters a used car dealership. It's a common errand for vehicle owners making a payment. But this dame is here to make a withdrawal. She told me she was going to give me her ID, but instead of pulling out her ID, I was looking at her handbag, and she pulled out a gun. Clerk Elizabeth Valdez dives to the floor, a desperate bid for survival. I thought I was going to die. The first person that came to my mind was my mom. I don't want to die. You know, I want to be here with my mom. But the woman pursues, diving onto the counter and squeezing the trigger. I yelled so loud. I just looked over and I can see the bullet in the hole right next to my feet. My heart was beating so fast. My, my body was shaking. I, I didn't know if I was alive or if I was dead. I didn't know what was going on. The robber grabs for the cash but misses, then bolts out the door. Liz can barely get to her feet. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm still alive. After alerting authorities, she makes one more important phone call to her mother. I call her and I tell her I'm okay and I told her what happened and she came rushing down right away from work to pick me up. The gun-toting female who nearly killed someone to steal all of zero dollars is still on the loose. 
But while she got nothing from this encounter, Liz walks away with a new appreciation for life. At first, I didn't want to go back to work, but, you know, we have to get over things and we have to move on. <laughs> I feel very, very lucky to be alive. Next, a reckless driver ignites a raging inferno, then flees the scene. Plus, a racist woman six her man on a store clerk. Go back to your own country, you un-American. Triggering a tooth and nail throwdown. Get down, get down, get down. That's straight ahead on Most Chucking Lawless Ladies. Seattle, Washington. Steve Sulla, an immigrant store owner from Yemen, has lived happily in this town for 18 years. I have a good day. Thank you. But tonight, this intoxicated woman will make him feel very unwelcome. The lady and her boyfriend try to buy some booze with a grocery store discount card. When Sulla tells them they don't accept it, she starts spewing bigoted comments. <laughs> She wouldn't listen and kept on making those racial slurs and comments. That's when her man lunges at Sulla. <laughs> he took his jacket off and uh, he uh, grabbed me in the throat. The owner snatches a metal pipe to defend himself and his frightened nephew. Get down. Get down. The man is down, but the Hellcat girlfriend is just getting started. You are breaking it, okay? We do not hate Americans. You're a... Bloody, go back to your own country, you Arabian. Suddenly, she bares her teeth and strikes. Sala again fends off the couple, but doesn't escape unscathed. She ended up biting me. It's not until police arrive that Sala realizes how much damage was done. Her mouth was full of blood. Her teeth were dripping. I mean, it's just like a lion. The unbelievable attack leaves the clerk with some nasty scars. It also leaves this racist dame and her henchmen facing up to nine months for malicious harassment. Perhaps she'll find the company behind bars. We do not hit Americans. More to her liking. Get down, get down, get down, get down! Richmond, Virginia. A woman enters a convenience store and pays for gas. After filling up, she puts it in drive and plows straight into a fuel pump. The crash ignites a fearsome blast. She only has seconds to escape the fiery inferno. But she does more than that. She flees the scene. But she didn't get away from the store's surveillance. Police make an arrest a few hours later. And her days of careless driving go up in flames. Germantown, Tennessee. This shoe store has seen its share of thieves lately. The girl behind the counter recognizes a shoplifter and alerts her co-workers. The woman in red rounds the register and then <laughs> strikes. She grabs the cashier by her hair and slams her into a metal rack. 
On her way out, she chucks a shoebox at the dazed clerk. The woman escapes. But with this video evidence, police hope to put the boot to her criminal ways. Los Angeles, California. This chase has been going for about 10 minutes. Many people come to this city seeking the spotlight. The female car thief in this SUV, however, is trying to avoid it. Oh, another intersection here, no cross traffic. She takes a hasty shortcut through a narrow parking lot and nearly mows down two shoppers. Oh, and they jump aside, that was close. She follows up the near miss with a clean hit. Up on the curb, and I think that car got scraped. Incredibly, the jarring encounter does nothing to slow the suspect down. She veers across the sidewalk and bounces into oncoming traffic. And the hits just keep coming. There's sparks as the car grinds along the curb here, and it just rear-ended that SUV. Police desperately need a way to end this chase when the woman provides the answer herself. She heads off-road again, blasting through a fire hydrant. Oh, look at that. The detour leaves her caught in traffic. And she can't pull her way through. Just ran that car. Police race in with guns ready and witness the strangest moment of the chase yet. The driver steps out calmly, hands raised, as if nothing is wrong. She's quickly arrested. The lady can play innocent all she wants, but no one is buying her act. That hydrant is still going off here. The cameras captured her real performance. That car got scraped. At every hair-raising turn. And it just rear-ended that SUV. And now the only picture she'll be smiling for... Oh, look at that. ...is a black and white mugshot. When it comes to law and order, there is no gender bias. And sometimes the fairer sex can be every bit as foul. So police have to be ready. Put your hands behind your back. Not just for the bad guys, but for lawless ladies everywhere.